right, it is week six of Friday Night Insights. Here's the big fellas on our left and right. We have Wes and Ben. Does the TV Wes make me ben. look fat? Um, and we are going to have talk about a lot of the games that includes uh, a couple on Saturday. Yes. Which we're not going to get a lot more of after this, but let's talk week six. Pekin at Washington is the first thing we have listed. Mm -hmm. Um. Washington heavily favored in everything they do. Yeah, they've really taken a huge step forward uh, this year. Uh, this is a game that over the past few years is Pekin has come in and compete a little bit, but this year Washington's taken such a huge step forward. That I was going to say, that's why I listed first. I knew Pekin had kind of, you know, come in and played. Yeah, year, I yeah, mean. Yeah, and and Coach Colton's. Colton. Yeah. yeah. This thing. Colton Vinovich and Colton Underwood. Uh, so Some Colton on Colton violence. Two of the finer athletes in the uh, conference. Morton goes to the stone. Yeah, that's probably the most competitive game of uh, the night among the big two. Um, Absolutely. This is a game that Limestone, if they play well, can, can win. But I just don't really know if they can handle uh, Tyler Lundin and that passing attack. They kind of got on a roll last week. They kind of got that. They met Canton and got things rolling a little bit. Met more at Canton, the Bob Swimmer Bowl. <laughs> Canton's been laying for this. That's my thing. That's why their scores <laughs> have been messy so far. They've been waiting for this game. What do you think? Um, I'm thinking it's going to be over by about 9.30. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, Richards at Speaking Central. Speaking harsh on Canton. <laughs> What's the time on that? Richards at Central. That one might not make it That could be a Steffi nine. Graf match right there. 55 <laughs> yeah, that's, that's 830. Uh, yeah, you got Richards and Clayton Ardane playing probably a couple running clocks to set up yeah. their meeting next week. We were talking before we came on about the lack of Canton versus Central this year. They've been playing yeah. for about five years. It would be nice for those kids to be in a and game of proper competitiveness this year, but it's not happening. Pittsfield, Pittsfield Griggsville, Perry, I can't say it one time fast. This is the uh, hyphen uh, slash. At Bushnell Prairie City Avon. Bushnell Prairie City Avon is like Detroit compared to saying Pittsfield, Griggsville, Perry. <laughs> it's the easy thing to say. But anyway, that's 5-0 and oh at 4-1. Who wins? Uh, it's going to be real close. I, I think... I'm going to go with Bushnell Prairie City Avon in this one. Hey, been hey, on, I they, couldn't get you to pick them last time. They've been Bushnell on a nice little roll since uh, since that disastrous loss to Illini West. But well, Who doesn't have the disastrous right, loss? Right, exactly. Trey exactly. Yoakum's just been on fire. He's rushed for 431 yards and nine scores in the last two weeks. Oh. Uh, now, Pittsfield, Griegsville, Perry has two outstanding rushers, Elijah Hoover and uh, Devin Johnson. Johnson's getting ready to go over the 1,000-yard mark already uh, on 11 scores. So... It's going to be a tough game, but I think uh, I think BPCA has got the defense to slow that rushing attack down and put enough on the board themselves. And the relatively easy to say Gibson City, Melvin, Sibley, is that DMAC, and that's where Ben Diggle's going. And I'm I'm alleging that, and this is no offense to anybody on DMAC, I'm just saying nobody on DMAC's team could find Gibson City, Melvin, or Sibley on a map, but it's a conference <laughs> game. That's today's world. Is that true? I, well, you don't know if that's true, but let's talk about the game. I was going to say, I, I, get, I can't answer that question because I grew up in those three going to those three towns constantly, so I can tell you exactly <laughs> where Gibson City, Melbourne, and Sibley are. Well, I grew up good friends with Jack Cogo from Gibson there City. There you go. Basketball coach and Illini football yep. usher. But there go on. Go. We digress. Uh, DMAC coming off a big win over Flanagan. I mean, a, a game that you kind of foresaw was going to be a good one, and, and I kind of poo-pooed it. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, DMAC. Brandon Evans busted out four touchdowns, and then you know Matt Cruzy to come up and make that PAT mm -hmm. late in the game to give him the win. That's huge. So yeah. Oh, yeah. we'll see. Standing on the field, it's forty-one all, and yeah. <laughs> you, you know, in the center and the holder. Oh yeah. Everybody's and, like, hey, we need this point to win. And, and I more hoped that it would be a good game, and I was super pleased to yeah. find out it was. Yeah. It was a odd defensive performance out of a Flanagan team that it had, had allowed seven nothing. points coming Pro in. Yeah. yeah. So. But um, DMAC is a little hard to get our finger on, and maybe we'll know better. This is a nice yeah. opponent coming. This is a nice opponent. This is a real nice opponent. You know, I, I'm a little surprised uh, uh, that the Gibson City's got a loss already. So, uh, you know, everybody kind of picked them as the ones that might run the table because they've got a lot of experienced seniors coming back. Is it Lexington? It is Lexington. Mm -hmm. Because they're beating yeah. everybody. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Now, Saturday, a couple matinees that are, to be honest, rare in these parts. We don't yeah. know who's going to win. Right, exactly. And, That's and very nice. Woodruff at Notre Dame, we say this from time to time, but Notre Dame is two and three, and they're going to beat Manuel and lose to Quincy Notre Dame in theory. Most likely. So yes. now they have Woodruff here and Springfield Lanfear in week nine that determines whether they're five and four and get a bid. Yeah. Who's better between Woodruff and Notre Dame? Well, it's 
one of those weird things. It's kind of like a some of the parts thing. I think Woodruff might have more talent than Notre Dame does, but it seems like Notre Dame's putting people in in the right places right yeah. now. And Woodruff's kind of just the Tyshawn, maybe it's the Tyshawn Burch thing, maybe it's, but from week to week, you're, really it's hard, really outside their quarterback, it's hard to find who's really, who's the guys, yeah. which, who's going to step up and have a big role. It's nice to see DeAndre Dorsey, who's that, who's a basketball standout for him, Yeah. or was, I guess, because we would have, I mean, this would be the, the, the last year, but uh, he had nine catches last week, and they spread well, the out a little bit. that quick. He can no, play no, yeah. there again. Yeah, they'll play basketball yeah. this, okay. this morning, I believe. You just gave Charlie Thomas a heart, a heart attack. Hold yeah, on <laughs> hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I mean, they need to have guys, because uh, one week it was Orlando Rutherford, I believe, stepped up, and he had some, some nice rushes, and then the next week it's somebody else. And it's like, if they can get some consistency on offense, because their, their defense is, is really good. I mean, they're fast on the defensive line. They're fast. I mean, they, they, so they all got, I need to hear. Yeah. Notre Dame will not move the ball on them. Then Notre Dame cannot go against any defense that has any speed. Okay. Well, then that, that, that's going to be an issue. I mean, I, problem is, I think this is going to be a low-scoring game, like a 14-12, 14-13. Come down to an extra point. Come down to a turnover, which is, I mean, most which football should be determined, determined by execution and not just oh, our offensive line is better than yours, so we're going to score 40. But gotcha. Warriors, middle pick who guy doesn't pick says Warriors, 20 to 10. No, actually, I, can, I can roll with six. that. Yeah, I haven't decided yet, but I, I want to go ahead and say that Tim has something up his sleeve that maybe we, we don't know. We don't know about We're right now. Polk they, at it, and they win it. They win a, a very, very close one. Dunlap is at East Peoria, uh, at Clatt Stadium at 1 p.m. Also on um, Saturday. And my guess is that you'll pick East Peoria by about 17 in the paper. And my belief is that it'll be a three-point game. How <laughs> two on them apples? <laughs> well. I like, like I, like I said here, East Peoria is a very tough team. They tackle well, they, they block well. They do a lot of the things that are not going to work against Metamora. I mean, Metamora just made them look extremely bad you, last week. You can't out Metamora, Metamora. It was amazing because it wasn't a situation where, like last year, where the, they got a punt block into the end zone. Or I mean, there were, East Peoria had no turnovers in, in like the first half when they got down. Thirty-four mm-hmm. zero. No turnovers. No major penalties to stall drives. It was just we beat you, and that you have to be a little bit disheartened by that if you're East Peoria. But at the same time, they're such a proud group. This, this group of seniors, the Nate Joseph and Chris Thornton and Steve Tyler. It's like now we got to come right, right back out. Yeah. Homecoming game, home. Yeah. Big, big I think, crowd. I think that's her saving grace is that those kids are just so. Do I have to separate you two on that? <laughs> this is yeah. grad and EP grad. We forget that because uh, it doesn't show. And to their credit, um, um, I forget what? where they're from, and I see them every day. I uh, Who thinks Dunlap can win? No. No. Nobody likes don't, this Dunlap passing attack. Dunlap, I just don't think Dunlap can stop the run well, well enough. Yeah, I think, I think they're going to get pounded on. Chris Thornton is back, their big left, left tackle from an ankle injury. They may still have, Nate Joseph may still be out. He had a some sort of weird side injury with like a blood vessel issue where he felt good enough to go. It's just that if he got hit, it could have extended, he could have been out for a while. So they kind of, they were played it really safe last week. I mean, because he was going to get hit last week. Are they ever going to increase the role of Eddie Sutter's nephew on that team? Man, Jerry's Dunlap? the best athlete on the team. Yeah, I think they're, I I, they're, 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 they're building. That's the, he's, yeah. he's I, I, the quarterback. I was hoping like within the season I'd see. Seven carries. I don't know. Something just touch. Well, he's it. a receiver. He's he's playing okay, with more of a tight end, a slot receiver type thing. And actually, he's Caleb quarterback gets in every single carry they because there are none to go around. They don't. Right? They just and that's throw another issue down. thing I think with East Peoria. They're going to be East Peoria will control the clock, and Dunlap is they just haven't haven't made an effort to run. I mean, you just can't. I don't, no, I don't think you can win. A, I don't think you can win a high school football consistently without running. Yeah, no. right. That's my we opinion. We all agree. Princeville at the Heights is that. It's the Heights is homecoming at the same time. All three of those games are one, I believe. Maybe yeah. this one's one thirty. Um, happens about this time every year. We will wrap it all up Saturday after we preview it all Friday. You know, the world's best sports photography team will be out there for the snap and wearing spiffy new blue games. shirts and hats. The and hats. hats. But they don't put them at the same time. It's kind of like a track suit. You can wear <laughs> like you can wear the track suit top. And jeans, and you go to the, I mean, the tracksuit bottom with like a shirt, but you know you don't wear them together. Can't so. wear them together. Can't wear them together. There's rules. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> bye bye.